Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics and an exciting day in Silverland because as you see there, silver trading with a $20 handle. That is the first time, well, we'll change, get rid of the changes in COVID data 19 reporting and pull up the five year silver chart right there where you can see silver above $20 for the first time since 2016. Interesting was right around this time, uh, we have an August 1st there, or no, July 1st rather. Um, and here we are in July of 2020. And even last year, you had that rally, which was, was, was rising throughout July, which I remember quite well because it is that time of year for the Sprott Symposium. Fortunately, we won't all be there in person, although a quick note, as tonight's video is sponsored by Miles Franklin, where you can buy, sell, or store gold, silver, platinum, or palladium. I'm actually thinking about getting some platinum myself, uh, which would be nice, especially at these levels, although on uh, the connection to the Sprott Symposium there, I will be manning the Miles Franklin booth a couple nights this week at the show. So for anyone who is going to be there, come and stop by. You can ask all of your silver questions. And, um, and if you did not get a ticket, the link for that is below, but will be a great conference. Normally we would be there and it would be a lot of fun talking silver. Um, but in either case, you can see here um, above $20. Now you may have missed that if you were looking at the kit code chart, which shows it just below $20. Although this is the futures price, which speaking of which, I know it's still early, but I've been keeping an eye. This open interest has actually been going up a little bit. Um, and you would assume it would come down before we get to the September delivery cycle. But again, we just saw record deliveries in gold in a month ago then record deliveries in silver this month now we will see so we have a little bit more than a week to go for getting notices for the august gold but that should be fascinating um again i don't know what people are supposed to think when you have gold where's our gold price let's pull that up 18 18 at 1819 um and as I was getting this video ready, I keep seeing Corona headlines, uh, how is impacting. Seems that all the headlines that are coming across are at least stating that the cases are growing. I hope that's not the case. Although, uh, you know, aside from the fact that the Fed is guaranteed, I mean, they're already printing whether, well, Corona is getting better with no end in sight, let alone if there's a second wave um and it's not surprising when you have gold near its all-time highs that silver finally above twenty dollars now the key question does it continue going higher or does it get pounded for from here well i guess it could probably be a combination of both um will be interesting to see how it goes although just a thought something i've been thinking about today i did a lot of uh well, you know, I have some trading decisions here and it's a very exciting time and went for a walk today, which I find is a good way to think out some of these things. Again, as I've mentioned before, I am not a big technical analyst. Um, now, maybe this is overgeneralizing, but just because something happened a certain way in the past, I don't think guarantees it has to happen a certain way in the future. I mean, certainly are there patterns that can be extrapolated at times? Sure. Although perhaps what I do feel more confident in, however, is that if there are people managing large amounts of money who are going to be following certain technical cues, to me, that's more of the driving factor. And just as I was thinking about it today, how, really for the last 10 years or so i've heard one silver analyst after another talk about the 21 dollar level this is following coming down from uh, 50 dollars in 2011. 
and I've heard it referenced often as the break point. Again, seeing here's back to 2016. So we're, you know, it did get between 20 and $21. Let's see if we can go a little further back here. Um, you know, again, there's people who can draw these charts and interpret them far better than I, but if you really have that combination, you know, I would imagine it would be considered a key technical level that what you had here. So, um, just to the degree that, and you know, I hear it now as well, I've heard it for years, whereas a lot of people looking at that 21 ish let's call it between 21 and 22 as a breakout area, as I hear it phrased. Um, you know, to the degree that there are people or banks that are also short, uh, I wonder if somewhere in there some derivatives get triggered. So a lot of interesting stuff that could happen. And I'm curious to see if there is a gap somewhere when you do have a full exposure of the COMEX fractional reserve metal system, that's kind of what I've been waiting for where, and I mean, I think for the most part, I've kind of thought that all along since I got into silver, especially since 2011, maybe not entirely since, but at least the last couple of years that this manipulation would probably continue on until whatever point you reach demand overwhelming what's actually out there. And, that's why what's happening now is so stunning to me because all these clues that I waited for and, and thought, well, what might you expect to happen before something like that happens? Similar, if you were studying Enron or Bernie Madoff and looking for forensic clues, you know, maybe they stopped paying their, their creditors or suppliers or what, you know, whatever the clues are, Certainly to see the massive amounts of metal going into the Silver Trust, the deliveries on the COMEX, and just the way it's, again, interesting, taking orders for Miles Franklin. So getting uh, at least a feel for what people are doing and it makes sense with what's going on in the world. Anyways, um, you can see here, so we're into Monday evening, right around $20. Uh, <laughs> And I love, again, once again, we see, you know, just massive moves then flat as a rock. So, or board, maybe rocks aren't that flat. So anyway, at least with the Kitco chart right at $20, I would think uh, probably won't be too long before we see a sizable move in one direction or another. Certainly, if there was ever a time for the banks to smash the price with, by like just dumping a lot of paper on the market, driving it lower, um, tonight would probably be the ideal time to do that. Um, because again, to me, the whole thing with the momentum is that maybe this shouldn't matter, but if funds move in after the price has gone up, after there's more attention, I mean, you're starting to already see a lot of people talk about silver and report on silver. Certainly if it goes north of 20, I would think that would continue. If there are banks out there that are really heavily contingent upon silver not going over 20, you would think that this would be the time to drop the hammer. Um, although I wonder if we're at the point where that just doesn't work anymore. Uh, and I guess we'll find out soon enough. Fortunately, uh, we'll have uh, some other thoughts on how to, uh, handle that and use that to your advantage because one of the challenges is let's say you think, all right, well, there's going to be a sell off. So, you know, I'll sell and then buy back lower. Well, what if it does go to 21 or 22 next? Uh, how do you know when to buy back in? Uh, are you able to, if your analysis says 22 is the right time to buy back in, but you thought it was coming back to 17, can you say, well, I'm happy to buy back in higher because simply from this point, I think it's going to go higher, not where I think my entry point should be. Um, by all means, for folks who have the ability to do that successfully, I, I mean, my encouragement, but go for it. Um, I just think that's a little bit, in fact, the more I think about it, Jess, the more I think that if I just do as little as possible, 
probably my own best strategy, um, but will be fun. And that's what's nice about trading. Everyone can approach things their own way, just sharing the news here and trying to provide some uh, good banker jokes and whatnot. So here is interesting. Saw this one early in the day on Seeking Alpha. Silver surpasses $20 first time since 2016. But look at some of these, these uh, bullets that appear that was not formally the case uh, to their highs since September. On rising haven demand, so now it's interesting. Uh, the rest of the world is considering silver a, a safe haven, I assume. And can, but here's the concerns about supply of the metal. I mean, now it's not just me or the people watching this show. I mean, it's, I just feel like that's uh, something that once the, I mean, once it gets out there, you don't, and that's why when people get into gold and silver, yeah, maybe sometimes they get tired of the weight, but it's like, you don't unknow it and you maybe don't know when it's going to happen. But to me, it always seem worth the wait especially uh, here, and we will come back to this one because uh, talks about COVID roiling the global economy. Here is Bank of America commodity strategist, Michael Widmore. You're flying on two engines, which are commercial demand and investor demand. We talked about that plenty. But even Bank of America, I, I'm, I'm gonna click on this one. Uh, Adam Hamilton, we talked about his article on Friday. And just wait, those percentages, the silver stocks were up more than that. So here you can see another article about the big move in the silver stocks. Um, here is Citigroup. Uh, it's only a matter of time before gold hits it, its record high, um, City says. So, man, it's sure a lot of people piling into the gold and silver community at a rapid pace. And I would say, again, I talked to a couple silver companies today, Silvercrest, Mag, and I checked in with my friend Mark at First Majestic. Um, when I'd say somewhat uniformly, uh, everyone seems to be, wow, look, City is also bullish on silver, expecting futures to rise to 25 an ounce over the next six to 12 months. Okay, we have Citibank now on the silver train. How exciting is that? And <clears throat> certainly seems like a new wave of institutional money coming into the silver equities now. And I think that will drive this. That's, that's always been the Achilles heel or the great opportunity, however you want to look at it, with silver where there's just, when you start really having money flow in, it's so small. That's why you get these big moves up. Speaking of big moves up, and I hope you can bear with me today. It's taken a while to record this one. I have some allergies here, but it's going to play hurt today. Get back on the field because I know you need the silver news today. It's important stuff. And man, look at, uh, I'm learning to accept life as it is. Although I was thinking about hunting down Gee, I think Lexco, AXU there was, man, I thought it was only like under 250, uh, geez, like a week ago. Uh, let's take a look. I mean, this is especially some of the, yeah, there you go, uh, last week. Yeah, 235. I was thinking about buying the two and a half strike, and then you can see a monster day out of Lexco Resources. That is a uh, stock that I've been learning more about and wish I had <laughs> finished my homework last week. But as you can see, all the silver stocks just up big. There's Endeavor, 15%. Uh, First Majestic, up almost 10% at $1.03. Silvercrest, 11.26%. Mag Silver, 4.5%. Mag's been rallying. I mean, these are the kind of days that you stay in the silver stocks for. There certainly have been enough frustrating days over the last couple of years, but 
I mean, when I, it, it's interesting, you hear what a difference it makes to some of these miners just going from $18 to $19 silver. Interesting to think when you go from $19 and eventually you're in the 30s or 40s. Um, so, which leads to the other thing I wanted to cover today where, you know, what's the way to do that where, um, I don't know, do you say, well, things were up today and sell a little bit, but if it's an asset that, again, you may have a fundamentally different valuation of silver, but if you are of the school of thought that we're gonna see prices north of 50, you know, that's a tricky thing. Uh, well, does it pull back or doesn't it? Um, and the sophisticated actually checked in with the option professor, Renron, today. We talked about it for a while, and I think the conclusion I really came to was that, gee, if these are companies that are really going to be selling silver at $50 plus, again, that's my assumption, but if that's correct, I mean, gee, it almost, uh, maybe there's your ultimate dollar cost averaging where find the companies you like, um, and if you have, you pay your expenses, if you have X left over at the end of the month, uh, Again, I'm not a financial planner, so don't, I am not by any means attempting to have, you know, explain diversification, but just to the degree of, to me, the potential for even further gains. Uh, I love it. As long as I think silver has to go higher, um, you know, I'll just pick the ones I like and... <laughs> keep throwing it in there and try and keep it as simple as possible. I think that's what's nice about when something gets this out of line. You don't have to be Warren Buffett on these things. So anyway, um, here we see Pan American Silver suspends operations in Peru as several workers at the mine recently tested positive for COVID. So there is Peru. Now this does not seem to indicate you know, across the whole country, but again, hopefully COVID does not pick back up again, but if it does and the, anything is similar to what happened the first time, and for what it's worth, I'm wondering uh, what the price will be by September between what's happening with the headlines and again, the big open interest in the September contracts. Certainly going to be a fascinating couple months, and I am darn glad to be here covering this. And also, of course, September, if you have not heard, is when Silverfest is being kicked off, September 12th to 13th. I woke up thinking how fortunate that I've been uh, able to meet so many of the silver experts in the world and then the silver companies. And it kind of hit me where, and I've been asking people, no one's been able to really come up with a, a silver party since the Hunt Brothers even. I mean, I know there was the Silver Summit up in San Francisco, although have just been thinking, gee, it's time to celebrate. You know, we've gone through so many bear markets and paper raids. So we are hosting, that's Arcadia hosting Silverfest this September 12th to 13th. And uh, maybe we'll do a contest to see who can guess the price by then. Um, by then we will have seen how these uh, silver deliveries in September play out. And I don't think it's an accident you're seeing the price move now. We've seen for years the paper price and what's happening in physical completely divorced. Yet the fact that you finally hit 20 at the same time you're seeing record demand, COMEX deliveries, and at least the reported SLV numbers, I don't think is an accident. So um, if that continues, which uh, I would think that it is likely to do so, uh, will be interesting to see what September brings. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, well, I know I mentioned it last week, but anyway, another 19 million ounces added into the Silver Trust. But I'm going to go back to that extended chart. Because for anyone who wonders, well, is the... In fact, I heard someone say today that 
the, the price of silver is kind of going up too quickly. Well, let's just take a look at, here's just the last couple of months alone. But this one's interesting because you see here again, here's 2011 when the price gets up to 50. And the amount of metal they're reportedly adding into just maybe not 45 degrees, but darn close. Because while the price was coming down from 50, we've seen it go, the amount of metal being reportedly stored in these trusts go from 700 million. So it's basically doubled to almost 1.4 billion ounces. So, I mean, I can't wait to see how this unfolds. I mean, I guess we'll find out whether I'm right or not soon enough, hopefully. But when you see things like that, and you see leverage in excess of 500 to one, um, that is at least why I <laughs> feel as I do. And by all means, do what suits you best. But anyway, there is gold at 1816. And lastly, before we wrap up tonight, fortunately, there's a book about all of this, the big silver short interviews with 15 of the world's top silver experts, including Bart. Chilton, which was an interesting interview where he confirmed the manipulation. Rick Rule, who is hosting the Sprott Conference. David Morgan, who I'm pretty sure will be at the Sprott Conference. Um, so I hope in, uh, by the way, if you'd like to get the book, it's in the link below. And hopefully uh, this show is making uh, the whole experience somewhat fun um, and enjoyable. Um, because it'll happen when it happens, although hopefully people are doing well and seeing their portfolios up. Quick note on the book, I'm told that with the exception of a few of the Australian orders, all of the orders are processed and on their way out. You can check in at chris at arcadeeconomics.com. I do want to make sure everyone gets their book. I'm sorry it's taken a little bit longer than expected. Although, uh, hopefully you've been listening to the audio version we sent out complimentary to everyone who had pre-ordered the book. And, um, but yeah, check in if you have not gotten it or you're wondering or, uh, but they're almost there. So with that said, going to wrap up for tonight, but I hope you had a great day following silver. Let's celebrate $20. Hey, maybe it'll go lower, but uh, certainly a lot to indicate that we are in the beginning of a bigger rally. Although if you're wondering, is silver about to get smashed? Well, that was the topic of yesterday's call with Dave Kranzler, which is coming your way now.